So you have lots of little side projects and interests. If you could do one thing, you know, and make a major career out of it, what would you pick? That's really hard. Um, probably uh, TV presenting. Um, I wasn't a very conventional TV presenter. I'm not usually what they look for in Australia. They usually look for very, um, you know, athletic, tanned, very stereotypically Australian girls, um, whereas I'm like a pale, nerdy chick. But um, <laughs> Oh, I should totally apply. I'm a very tan, beautiful Australian girl. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't tell from his oh, yeah. incredible accent. Oh, yeah, totally. I cover it well. <laughs> but um it was it was a great job it sent me all around the country um you know it had potential to take me overseas i met a lot of really cool people and i got to do a lot of really cool things um it was the best i love voice acting don't get me wrong but um yeah just the opportunities that tv presenting gave me were just phenomenal it was awesome all right nice so before the <laughs> continents all broke up when they were one big thing, I'm pretty sure New Zealand is somewhat near Australia. Have you ever went to visit uh, any of the sets from where they filmed The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings? Don't even start me. I have not yet, and it is the greatest crime. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's on my bucket list. That's why I had to ask. Oh, it's it's. I know a lot of people who've been. I've got a really good friend, actually, who went before the second part of The Hobbit came out. He went for the premiere. He's big into his costuming and um he made this amazing boromir costume and it actually had the the arrows <laughs> in his chest oh really it was sick <laughs> um and they had like a big party there before the premiere that everyone was invited to in costume and peter jackson showed up wow he loved this guy's costume so he gave him really? like red carpet tickets and he's like, just, oh, that's so cool. he's like, please just wear the costume. So he walked down the Hobbit red carpet and met everyone in costume. <laughs> um, so New Zealand sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of made it harder for me to play other games, which is just the worst. Like, uh, I've been trying to play The Last of Us and I've kind of been enjoying it. But at the same time, it sort of bores me. Um, just because I'm like, well, I've played this kind of character like 80 times. But oh, there there goes half of our subscriber base. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, I might just <laughs> log off right now, to be honest with you. No, it's, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm really. Interested. I know. I'm teasing. I really like his relationship with Ellie. That's kind of the thing that's kept me going. But you know, white guy with stubble, brooding, <laughs> dark past, doesn't want to connect with anyone. God, gee. I... No, I get that, but I think it's different in the way that Ellie actually makes that game, even though she's not the main playable character. And if you play Left Behind, then... I mean, like, that's kind of the saving grace for me, I think, is that his relationship with Ellie and what Ellie does bring out with him does make him different in the end. But um, at the start there, before the changes started happening, I'm like, oh, God, how am I going to get through this, like... I was like, oh, God, they're lucky the gameplay is so good, <laughs> or else I'd be out. But, um, yeah, back to... Or else it'd be forgotten in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, speaking of the bugs, it's it's really interesting. I think a lot of the problems come from the Gamebryo engine, which is <laughs> kind of what they built uh, Elder Scrolls 4 off of, Oblivion. Mm. And it was really interesting because I did some research for this podcast and I went back through it and it seems like they made the Gamebryo engine specifically for PC and Xbox 360 mm. and getting it to work on PlayStation 3 was super difficult. Yeah. And that ended up creating a ton of glitches on the PS3 version of the game and that even four years later, they didn't fix. Yeah. Apparently that version is still littered with glitches. Well, even Skyrim kind of had the same, you know, problems. Yeah, was that also built on the Gamebryo engine? No, it was I, built I on know. the Creation engine, I think. Yeah, yeah it okay. was Creation, but and and Fallout New Vegas, which you know obviously wasn't Bethesda, it was a Obsidian, but that was Gamebryo. It, it had the same issues on PlayStation Three that it did. It didn't okay. have that type of issue on PC and, and Xbox. Yeah, but you know. With all those bugs, it was still an amazing game. I mean... Oh, it, yeah. It, I kind of feel like the bugs kind of make the game. If Really? Yeah, there's just, like... 
in in most games, I think bugs, you know, obviously are really annoying. Um, they kind of, you know, take you out of the game. But I think Fallout, the series, is just one of those. There's just something about the vibe of the game where you kind of look at the bugs and weird things happening and graphic glitches and people not doing what they're meant to do and faces coming off and weird things like that. And you're just like, oh, Bethesda, like, it's, it's <laughs> funny. And, and, and to be fair, there, there were also many bugs on PC and Xbox. They were just maybe more nuanced and, I don't know what nuanced is the right word, just more enhanced, I guess, in on the enhanced PlayStation bugs. 3. But it the game is so amazing and it, the scope of it is so huge. Yeah. There's no, there's no way you could play test all of that and get everything right, knowing everybody's configuration on their console, so on and so forth, what choices they're going to make. All things considered, they did a pretty good job. Yeah, like Skyrim was great and I, I love the storyline because I'm like a history nerd and I love Vikings and stuff like that. So I was like, <laughs> yes, let's go team up with the Stormcloaks, even though they're racist. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um... I, I, was, I was all pumped up to join the Stormcloaks <laughs> that, because I love Viking stuff too. Measures. I didn't actually yes. realize that he was a racist until I was halfway through his quest and then I was like, you know what, I've come this far. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I showed up there, I'm like, yeah, I'm all ready to join your rebellion. And then I was just like, wait a minute, this is horribly racist, guys. <laughs> We're all just cool with this? Yeah? Oh, I guess I'll go join the Imperials. Oh, man. But, like, I mean, I yeah. but they don't really give you that much incentive once you kind of get your Dragonborn powers to yeah. finish it, if that makes sense. Like, you kind of no, get halfway through the story to figure out what your powers are and figure out how to unlock things and kind of get to your most powerful and then you can just be like well i don't see what i get out of this if i actually finish the storyline so you know i i thought they did a decent job of that in fallout 4 too uh i i mean for me it worked because i was just like oh that that i I won't spoil that game i guess because it it's fairly recent Mm. but the the opening was just kind of like well i gotta go kill some people now like I, I was very, I was very much just this revenge bent, murderous <laughs> woman on a warpath. See, I, um, I was like, yeah, I'm like, okay, where's my child? Where the hell's my child? And then I met Hancock, and then yeah. it turned into what baby? Like, I just kind of forgot <laughs> about my child. I'm like, well, he's probably happy without me. So, um, <laughs> and I've got like a zombie boyfriend now. That's that's going to be hard to explain. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah i see i i know what you mean like even oblivion it's not really that great of a intro either like just kind of they're like someone killed the king and i'm like so <laughs> well i'm not in prison anymore see ya i'm free let's go steal some horses <laughs> <laughs> So, Elizabeth, what are some of your favorite moments from Fallout 3? I I don't want to say set piece because that word's overused, but what are some of the most memorable things that stick out to you, just even maybe the smallest things? Well, obviously, like, when you come out of the vault, as I've mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Something I really, really liked about that game was... um, There's a moment um, when you go back to the water purifier with your dad and he takes a minute to talk to you. Um, And that's where you kind of start realizing that there's emotional and sentimental consequences to your actions as well. So um, you know how you've got like the karma rating system. Mm -hmm. Um, He actually, depending on where your karma is sitting, he actually says either I'm so proud of you and what you've done. And, you know, you're just like your mother, you've got such a good heart. Um, Or if you've blown up Megaton, (laughs) um, he's not happy. He's like, Megaton, really? Like, all those people, like, I am so... And it's Liam Neeson, too. So when Liam Neeson (laughs) says, I'm so disappointed in you, it, like, hurts. Like, you know how your parents can kind of get angry at you and you're like, okay, whatever. But then if they go, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. That, that's That's rough. That's the worst. 
yeah. the worst thing. And then, you know, Liam Neeson does that to you. And I thought, you know, that was just something that like kind of not affected me, but it, it made a mark. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, wow, Liam Neeson was definitely the right choice for this. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> um, another thing I really liked was, um, I actually love Butch, um, if it's not obvious. <laughs> he's he's definitely my favourite character, probably next to... Um, no, he's, he's my favourite character in Fallout 3. Okay. Which a lot of people disagree with me on this, but I thought he's just, for a side character, he's got so much depth to him. They really could have just phoned in the whole Butch Delory as a bully thing. Do you want to get revenge on him or be a nice person? If you choose to help him out when he needs it, you actually start learning things about him. Like you look around his apartment and you realize there's vodka bottles everywhere and his mother's an alcoholic. You know, you can you can talk to him after and he's like, he kind of softens up a bit and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry for how I treated you in high school, stuff like that. And I just thought that that's a really kind of cool way to approach that, to, you know, have a kind of miniature villain but mm-hmm. then give them that depth so that you can decide whether they're a bad guy or not. I just thought that was cool. Also, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I okay. thought it was cute. Um, <laughs> as an aside, it's pretty cute for a video game character. Um, <laughs> I, I know for me, one of the moments, like, and I know it's, it is a set piece moment, very much so, but I absolutely love the ending of the game where you get to meet... Uh, Oh, what's his name? The giant robot. Uh, um, Prime, 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 yeah. Yeah, Liberty Prime. Liberty Prime. Liberty, just hearing the things that Liberty Prime was programmed to say and trying to put that <laughs> yeah. into a real world context and like just watching <laughs> this giant robot going to town, shooting lasers everywhere while like shouting out like die commie scum like death is a suitable <laughs> alternative to communism like <laughs> yeah. like these crazy violent nationalistic things uh and just imagining imagining that trying to be put into the real world and just being like uh, it's just amazing on almost every level i love it i love liberty prime so much it was just suddenly a, a mighty morphin power rangers moment and you're like what where did this come from <laughs> i i think that's again the kind of undercurrent of weird humor you find in fallout like um yeah you know like up until that moment that part of the game is so serious you're like oh <laughs> gosh everything depends on this like my father's legacy depends on this the fate of the wasteland depends on this you know the the brotherhood mm-hmm. of steel depend on this and then you've got liberty prime yeah, <laughs> and yeah. he's like the campus solution to communism uh, humanly possible and <laughs> It's crazy, and I love him, and um, <laughs> it's it's genius, really. Um, mm-hmm. I'd I'd love a game where you just played as Liberty Prime, just crushing. Oh it. yeah, yeah, that'd be sweet. Did you guys enjoy the uh, I call it the the Pleasant Valley moment? That might be what it's called, but it reminds me of the movie. Um, you know, you know. Oh the, yeah, the black Wait. and white part where you go back to the where civilization was still normal for some amount of time. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it's called, and that's gonna drive me nuts. Uh, yeah. You're in like a virtual reality yeah, machine. I, yeah, yeah. I, I just call it Pleasant Valley because it reminds me of that movie. But it might, Tranquility yeah. Lane. That's the one. Yes. Yes. Yep. With the music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, I think that's actually a really iconic part of the game. It's just bizarre. And, and it's bizarre, but it also came at a good part where things were all serious, and you weren't really sure what to do and then just suddenly you had this moment of tranquility and th- that was nice at least after playing for a couple hundred hours and 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 getting there <laughs> and um, they like look at you boy and it's like a watch yeah, <laughs> and you're yeah. like oh no <laughs> everything's all not in disarray you know there's swing sets and there's you know, the leave it to beaver housewives doing the things that they do and I think it, my favorite thing about that segment is um that you know, uh, Dr. Braun, who created it, was like, okay, it's just going to be perfect. It's going to be like a sanctuary. It's going to be paradise, you know, totally 1950s perfection. Mm-hmm. Yet the people in the simulation are still, like, cheating on each other and, like, yeah. still finding <laughs> yeah. ways to ruin it for him. Yeah, and no, love that. it's still somewhat reality. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
just that concept of of getting mass feedback it helps exactly yeah. and you know i i i'm just going to say straight up i don't really have an opinion on that i don't want to ha- i don't want to have an opinion on the actual pose <laughs> itself because i don't play overwatch i don't know anything about it and honestly like as far as i'm concerned um it's their game if someone gives them feedback and they decide okay, yeah, no, nah, you're right, we're going to change it. For whatever reason, that's their game. They're allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's not the same as a full-blown campaign to entirely remove um, a, a character or something like that. Like, it wasn't an abusive campaign. It was literally one person saying, <laughs> hey, you know, just a suggestion, but in my opinion, I don't really like this, but, hey, it's up to you, it's your game. Like, they were so polite about it. And they just went, no, that's really good feedback. That's cool. We'll do that. And it wasn't because they wanted to give in or they were worried about blowback or something. They literally just said, no, that's a really good point. Thank you. Like, that should be it. That should be the end of the discussion. (laughs) And it should have been. Right. We just kind of overlooked that. Eh, our bad. I mean, they weren't going to sell any more or less copies based on that. But, you know, they were open to it and... They didn't take the, you know, I like David Jaffe, but they didn't take the whole David Jaffe approach of F you, this is, this is my vision. I'm going to do it however I want to do it, <laughs> you know, type of thing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Well, they kind they, they kind they kind of said that, but in a much more diplomatic, but, diplomatic way. They were there, like, there you know, is it's, a way to say our... that without being David Jaffe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> God, I'm actually doing an anime convention this weekend. I'm working there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Are you commissioner of no, I'm, um, anime wrestling? I'm working for a, uh, a store, actually. Um, a friend of mine runs it. Um, and, yeah, they just need people to help with retail. So I'm just dressing up and um, okay. trying not to get a headache. <laughs> um, because, Aww. I don't know, I think I've reached this really weird stage with conventions where I love them and I still live for them. They're how I met so many people. I've, I owe so much to conventions. Um, but at the same time, I'm just done. <laughs> like, there's so much yeah. there that I just can't. Maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe I'm getting old. Um, but... Yeah, just the screeching and the glomping and the peace <laughs> signs. I just can't anymore. <laughs> it's it's a lot to process. I'm, I I don't blame you I'm one bit. Old. As the kind of person who sees that stuff and is just like, <laughs> I'm tired just seeing I've it. I've been doing it for like nearly seven years now. I've been doing conventions and I'm just this bitter old convention queen and... <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel if the next Fallout game was set in Australia? I would be inconsolable. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would just, first I'd cry. Like when Fallout 4 was announced and the trailer came out, I was actually like crying. Um, I was that excited. Um, I was really lucky to go to a Bethesda event that they had for the E3 event that they had um, in Sydney. And um, I was, they took photos of me crying. Um, and it was the most embarrassing moment of my life. Um, so if, <laughs> if Fallout 5 was announced to be in Australia, I don't know what – I'd actually be really concerned about myself. Um, I'd probably have to get a friend <laughs> to come over and make sure I was okay. Um, and then I think – Hyperventilate out yeah, of happiness. Yeah, and then I think my next step would to be to badger everyone I know in the voice acting industry, everyone I know at Bethesda, um, and be like – Hey, so I'm a voice actress. Um, when when do I come in? Like I I would just have to be in that game. That would be my main concern, which is so shallow and horrible. But I would be like, I have to be a part of Fallout, and this is my shot, and I've got to do it. Like that would be my concern, <laughs> which is really <laughs> sad. Well, I mean, I mean it, it yeah, makes sense. I, I, it. I don't I don't think that's a shallow thing to want to do. Like that it makes sense. It's not a- you're an you're Australian voice actress. And, Why wouldn't you be in the And, fun? I mean, there's not a lot of um, video games that actually call for Australian accents now that the Mad Max um, hype has kind of died down. There's been a lot less for us. So if that happened, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> like, 
Well, that's actually, you, you mentioned Mad Max. Uh, it got me to thinking, you know, maybe the success of Mad Max makes Fallout Australia more of a po- possibility. kind of think I like that concept. Yeah, I'd, I'd I play mean, the crap going, out of that game. Trekking through the outback, it's kind of like the wasteland, kind of like the wilderness, and there's all kinds of awesome creatures that could be mutated there that you'd have to deal with. I oh, actually yeah. um, grew up uh, probably 10 minutes out of where they filmed the first Mad Max film. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it, anything Mad Max or Fallout related, um, I kind of treat like a religious experience now. <laughs> I totally do a Fallout walkabout across the Australian wasteland. That, that's probably stereotypical to say, but... Um, yeah, they no, do, they do Mad Max tours out to um, where they did a lot of filming. I mean, a lot of it is just like unlivable land and they'd film and then go back to Sydney or whatever. But um, yeah, no, you can definitely see everything. It's still there, most of it. Nice. Really? Yeah, Australian film's pretty huh. much been dead ever since. So um, <laughs> yeah, we, we like Mad Max. We're a big fan of that. If they were to, re- well, to really say Fallout Australia, I would name my character John Locke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you just got to get everyone who's listening to the podcast now to uh, email Bethesda and be like, hey, <laughs> how you doing? So uh, Fallout 5, Australia, yeah, sounds good, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Just everyone. <laughs> the capital yeah. wasteland was cool. Do Boston that. was cool. But they're pretty close. I mean, they're pretty similar. So there are other countries out there devastated by nuclear war. I'd what? actually love to see one set in China. I think yeah, that would be, be great. so interesting. Or the UK, um, especially because of, you know, their history with London literally being bombed um, and that sort yeah. of keep calm and carry on attitude. I'd, I'd totally love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that would be so interesting. But um, I have had it pointed out to me that Fallout kind of still does rely a lot on Americana. Um, mm-hmm. and that American patriotism. So I think it'd be a while before they did go overseas. Um, but, yeah, man, that'd be so cool. That'd but, be so cool. <laughs> what do we have the time? It could happen. That was that was deep, Jeremy. Wow. <laughs> hey, like my mom oh. tells me, even the losers get lucky sometimes. So every now and then I say something <laughs> smart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You're not so, a loser. So You're Jack, a where winner. Do you, where do you fall on this game? Where, where do I fall out on this game? Uh. Uh, I... <laughs> Oblivion is great, but just within a couple of years, the technical and, gra- and, and graphical and all the other changes that or improvements, I, I should say, that they made in their the way they developed their games was amazing. You, Fallout 3 is far and above oblivion when it comes to just being you know the animations the the fluidity and oblivion is great i feel as though oblivion was their kind of breakthrough into hey look at this cool stuff we've got we've got this new engine it yeah. does all these things. how cool <laughs> yeah. is that and then fallout 3 was like okay we've refined it this is what this is the kind of stuff we're going to do with it like this is like the hey check out what I did when I was hidden away in the <laughs> Shaolin mountain training. Um, like, that was their moment. Um, but I think it's really important to acknowledge oblivion. Um, oh, yeah. sure. The strides that they made in that initial engine, um, because without it, we wouldn't have had fallout and there wouldn't exactly. be that basis for the crafting and the refinement and the polish and the stories and the characteristics of fallout three. It would have mm-hmm. just been, Oh, Here's the new engine. I just hope it doesn't break. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that, yeah. That's why we are definitely going to be talking about Oblivion at some point on this podcast. I love Oblivion, and I probably put more time into Oblivion than any other Bethesda game. Uh, so I'm I'm right there with you. So but yeah. I w- oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I I was just going to say I kind of missed out on Oblivion. I I don't know why, and I've gone back and tried to play it, and um, I think. It, it doesn't have the same... It hasn't aged the same way Fallout 3 has, I don't think. And I think a lot of it has to do with the character creation. Um, 
Have you seen how someone actually, you know how usually in Oblivion, if you try to make a normal looking face, it looks like someone's <laughs> had an allergic reaction to shellfish? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, someone actually made the most accurate Ted Cruz. Yeah, I saw that. That was pretty hilarious. How they got it, like, I mean, I don't know if that says more about Oblivion or more about Ted Cruz's <laughs> face, that they did it so perfectly. Like, it's incredible. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to bring up the Ted Cruz face. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I love that you did. Um, but I I think it's, like you said, it Fallout 3 is like watching someone who trained for years in a Shaolin temple come yeah. down and like start water bending or something. Like yeah. <laughs> just crazy, crazy things. Because if you look into how they actually got things in the game to work... It's some of some of them. Some of those things are literally insane. Okay, like, I can. Sorry, I am so sorry yeah, to yeah. interrupt. Can I just tell you about my favorite weird thing that they've done to make it work? Go for it. Um, there's a stage in the game um, where you have to get on a train, um, on a subway train, but they didn't actually have anything in the engine to make vehicles move. So they're like, "Oh shit, we don't want to have to engineer this. What are we going to do?" So literally to get the train to move through this track that you stand on, they made the train a hat. And so this whole train cart is a hat. And there's a person (laughs) underneath the train cart, an NPC, who just runs. Just runs down the thing. And that's the train. It's literally a hat on some nameless NPC that runs (laughs) you down the subway. It's my favorite thing in the world. (laughs) Like, Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's... Like, it, it <laughs> that stuff is like literally my favorite thing to find out about video game development. Cause in, when you're playing it, it's, it seems seamless. And then you find out, oh yeah, the train is just a guy yeah. running <laughs> with a hat. Um, <laughs> like... <laughs> or like, uh, have you ever, have you ever climbed a ladder in any Bethesda game? Uh... Yes. No, like, have I? No, I, as a part, I don't think that. I've pressed that's a, a thing. go up a ladder, but I think it cuts away. Yeah, they've they've taken out every single ladder. Like any time you climb, you would otherwise climb a ladder in a Bethesda game. Mm. It it's a scene transition to a different area, mm. uh, and that's because the AI in their engines doesn't know how to climb ladders, <laughs> and so they just <laughs> didn't make ladders that are climbable. <laughs> they just worked around it. Yeah, yeah, um, like. <laughs> Stuff like that is just that that's super interesting to me. And I love I love finding out little random things like that about games like Fallout. Which I'm 3. totally cool with because I'm terrified of ladders in real life anyway, so <laughs> in, in Australia you actually have to have a ladder license. Um, what? What? If you're Yeah, seriously, this is something <laughs> that I just learned because um we've got like I don't know if you had the same kind of thing in the States, but probably not. We have a bunch of laws and restrictions in regard to workplace safety called OHS, Occupational Health and Safety. Um, and they have to be followed. And if they're not followed and there's an accident in your workplace and they find out it wasn't being followed to the letter, you get sued and you get shut oh. down. You're entirely responsible for that. Yeah, person. we have that in workplaces. It's called OSHA. But like yeah. I can have a ladder at my house and be a dumbass on it all day long if I want. On, <laughs> on private property, it's like different. You don't need a ladder yeah. license. But um, if you're using, if you're in any professional workplace here and um, you want to use a ladder, even if you're in an office and you just need a ladder to get some files, you cannot use that ladder under OHS law unless you have done a short OHS course on the safe use of ladders. Yeah. So, uh, you know, most like, offices here there'll be like one to two people who have their ladder license and if you want to get something down with the ladder the person with the ladder license has to handle the ladder and <laughs> climb the ladder <laughs> it's... that is the most amazing misuse of bureaucracy <laughs> maybe I've ever not heard in of. every industry and job here but in certain settings we have some pretty crazy regulations like that as well Oh, no. Australians <laughs> just love OHS. it's like our favorite thing <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it keeps people in jobs so, you know, the the people that have to write those regulations, they probably make a lot of money to do so. And and I'm sure they have the best interest of the people in their minds when they do that. Is that something a foreigner can get? Can a foreigner come to Australia and get a yeah. ladder license? Can, can because... you get like an out-of-country ladder license that's good for like three days if, if you... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, like here, you can come and get it out of, out of state or out of country fishing license. It's good for like two days. <laughs> God, I really hope so. I really, really hope. <laughs> like, just I'm just imagining this American guy at customs, like, just being like, uh, while I'm here, uh, I'm planning to use a ladder <laughs> while I'm in this country. Uh, who do I speak to about obtaining a ladder license? Like, <laughs> I, I can see the American embassy working hard to get the guy that illegally used a ladder out of jail and 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 back home. Because I plan to someday visit Australia, and when I do, I just I would love to be able to come back and just tell people that I I got a ladder license while I was in Australia. I would frame just it just in case, because that would be amazing. Like maybe they just stamp it right on your passport. Is allowed to use ladders, step stools, not so much. Ladder permit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many rungs I mean, how does many it have to be to be considered a ladder? Can you can you can you, can you, can you stand up on just a yeah and yeah yeah yeah? <laughs> and if it's an extended, if it's an extended ladder, ladder, you know, ladder, is that know, a, is that, that a, another is that level? Another level? I can absolutely guarantee that that is spelled out word for word in the legislation. Like I can guarantee it. I don't know that I love that or hate it, but I find it comical. I I love it. I love it. I don't, I don't want it here, but I do love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it, but I love that it exists somewhere. Um, I mean, uh, well, Australia I... is, is safe, yeah. So, <laughs> look if you if you guys are ever in in my part of the world, let me know, and I'll uh, take you guys to go obtain your ladder license. Okay, I'm gonna take All right. you up on that. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> like, what kind of what kind of license do I need to do the the kangaroo boxing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's no licenses for that, mate. Nice. <laughs> you, just, you just go for it, mate. We would, we would never impose restrictions on that. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, I think we have to wrap up because you have to go. Yeah, it's, I really it's... Do. This has been a blast, though. Ten bucks, Daniel calls it ocarina. Oh, and yeah. I might have to, might, might have to hurt yep. him. Yep. So he, he also calls it Ico, yeah. whatever it's Ico. Yeah. It will always be Ico to me. Yeah. He's just weird. But video games became a mistake as soon as people started streaming Goldfish playing Pokemon on Twitch. Oh God, right? <laughs> I remember that. It's still gone. I think I think they actually still got right. a Pokemon up to level twenty. Somehow. I mean, that's a great advancement for science, but I don't <laughs> really know that it's necessary for entertainment. And another step for fish rights, I guess. I, I, but, I suppose. Um, I, I suppose. Hey, te- our, our, te- our technology our, has, technology surpassed, has our humanity. surpassed our humanity. Hey, eventually that goldfish is, is going to evolve into a Gyarados. So. And eventually it's going to die, because that's what goldfish do. <laughs> and then it's going to be sad. If that's not great entertainment for stoners, I don't know <laughs> what it is. <laughs> like... Hashtag rest in peace, Goldie. We're going to see that someday. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, Elizabeth. It was an absolute joy to have you. Um, and we'd love to have you back if you ever feel like coming on to talk about the original Fallout or something like that. I mean, or a different game. Are there, are there other games you enjoy? Oh, God, How about Bioshock? I, I... Bioshock. We all love Bioshock. Bioshock would be good. I like Bioshock, but I'm not a huge Bioshock nerd, actually. Um... Oh, and your name is Elizabeth. How did that happen? I know, right? Do you know how that was for me? I was working as a game journal at the time. It was so confusing. Like, everyone was like, oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. I'm like, what have I done now? Like, <laughs> You're a great character. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, I'm very three-dimensional. Um, uh, but no, uh, I think the next game I'm really nerdy on is actually Dragon Age. Really? Oh, um, okay. We're, we're fairly nerdy on Dragon Age. We haven't talked about yeah, it. Yeah. I am down with that back cannon, man. Let me tell you about the mages and the mage rebellion and the justicars and blood magic being the best magic. Because uh, I could go on for hours. Dragon Age <laughs> is a series is so great that even Dragon Age Two is like awesome just because it's Dragon Age. Oh, uh, and that game sucks. Hey, <laughs> like, hey it's still good. you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, yeah. I actually really like Dragon Age Two, so eventually we're going to talk about that and we're going to have a nerd fight. It's great. But it's one of those things where it. it it doesn't really suck, I guess, but in comparison, it's not Dragon Age. For a, for a bad game, it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of like Mass Effect 2 and 3 compared to Mass Effect 1. 
No, shut up. You sh- shut your mouth and you take that back. Way better. But, Infinitely. but yes, and better than Mass Effect 3, correct? Best of the series. Best of the series. Preach. Okay. See, so... Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 was the best. See, I'm going to say it. I'm going to stick by it. I'm going to defend it. You're wrong. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. www.wrong.com. <laughs> I'm um, only half wrong. Oh, slash one, you. Therefore, I win. <laughs> Um, I've actually got a Mass Effect 2 tattoo, um, which is, yeah, really? so, uh, you know where I stand on that. <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's pretty, That's pretty awesome. passionate. Well, hey, hey, I mean... Don't well, get mad at me I mean, just because I'm the Paragon option, okay? We're going to have a passionate discussion about all the Mass Effect games at some point. So anyway, there's options. Dragon Age, Mass Effect, and probably other Bioware games, I'm guessing, <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Are there any? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Maybe Nice Little Republic. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, if you ever want to talk about Star Wars, I, I'm your girl. Um, <laughs> got a lot of Obi-Wan Kenobi feelings up in here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to close it out here. Final, final close out. Thank you for listening to the best games, period. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to our humble little podcast and be sure to catch us next week, every week on Mondays. And with that, make sure you check out Extra Life, which is a pretty sweet charity that allows you to play video games and help sick kids in hospitals all across North America. It's pretty sweet. Check it out. Play games, heal kids. You can't go wrong. It's a win-win. 100% of all proceeds go to help kids in whichever hospital you choose to donate to. It's really great. Yeah. Even even here in tiny little Montana, we have a children's hospital that, that benefits from that. So do it. Do it. Otherwise, you're a terrible person and hate children. Boom. <laughs> just just kidding. Maybe maybe you just can't. It, it's okay. With that, that's a wrap. Go go, go do something else, listener. Or what? Whatever. No. I'm gonna edit this no. to make it sound better anyway. Don't don't do that, listener. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.